Fursuits, we've made it. From the masquerades of the 16th century aristocrats to the masquerade at the local anime convention. As furry conventions took off from the launching pad that was Conference Zero in 1989, furries would bring their own cosplay to life in this strange new world of funny animals. Furries had their territory marked out of their own creations. The term fursuit was first coined around 1993. The invented word is attributed to Robert King. Before that, some called them zoots, a portmanteau of zoo and suit, or like a zoot suit, but we don't use these terms anymore nor do we really know where they came from. In these early proto-fursuits from science fiction and anime conventions, we see the foundations already being laid out for what would be the standards of fursuit creation. I'm your host, Underbite. Today, we are gonna be looking at how fursuits are made and the varieties of styles that fursuits come in. This is Fursuiting, a history, part six, the anatomy of the fursuit. And finding the sternocleidomastoid on your fursuit head is culturally apt. The anatomy of the fursuit is surprisingly and delightfully complicated. Sometimes they are just faux fur draped over one's body and a complex mask to finalize the character. Sometimes they are elaborate soft sculptures, completely changing the shape of the human underneath them with foam, corsets, even inflatable pillows. There isn't really a wrong way to make a fursuit. You don't even need fur. The costumes can be velour, felt, even latex. They can represent short fur, scales, aquatic whale skin, even feathers. I've even seen some fursuits made from non-traditional materials like burlap, shredded paper, plastic, and cardboard. Take that, recycling. Hi, my name is Saga. I own Furious Fluff, and you can find me on Instagram at Furious Fluff. I also on Twitter at Furiously Fluffy. I make fursuits in Toronto. I'm also an artist, and welcome to my studio. Basically, start with an inquiry. I give a quote. Um, start collaborating on what the costume will be and what the sort of expectations are for it. Then ordering the fur and all the fabric and materials that go along with it. The process usually takes about two to 12 months between my full-time job and stuffing them into a box and shipping them wherever. In earlier footage of furry conventions from the 1990s, we see several different kinds of fursuits we have what we might recognize already as a fursuit today, though it'd be more rough around the edges with a Warner Brothers cartoonish aesthetic that would fit in just as comfortably at a theme park as on the convention floor. These are foam sculpts with few bells and whistles, just some mesh to see through and maybe some foam to build up a structure for whatever body shape the wearer is going for. Some fursuits don't cover the whole body. There is the less committal partial fursuit with only the head paws, and maybe a tail and feet present, allowing for further breathability, flexibility, versatility, and above all, comfort. If it's really hot out, you may even see some partial fursuiters do what's called poodling, in which it's a mix of bare skin and fursuit parts. As demand rises, these different variants compete for accessibility and popularity. Standards of fursuit production rise every year, and new fursuits are revealed better than their predecessors. More color, more variation, stronger shapes, better proportions. By the mid to late 1990s, the fursuit aesthetic starts to become more standardized. And with more numbers, we see design trends start to emerge. Preferences in color palettes, species, or body shape. A lot of these sorts of things can't happen until you have the community coming in and creating all these mass numbers to really start building into the bigger quality. In this way. Another big duct tape dummy just hanging out in here. Uh, so we got this foam bird foot that I used for making a pattern for one of my last commissions. This essentially turned into this one. So I made the pattern from here and then turns into this guy. And this one is nearing completion. Uh, just needs to be lined and some other finishing touches and like the back. <laughs> this is the fur pile for my current projects. Making a raccoon and a possum and lots of trash animals. And this is my archive of older furs that I used to experiment with and have fun. And a bunch of foam. Old Faithful. Hot glue is definitely an essential. You can use it for anything and everything in person making. 
As the art form progresses, standardization of animals by certain fursuit creators comes about with resin foam casts and the production of multiple blanks at a time to allow for four or five pups to look like they shared the same mother. Fursuit jaws offer a unique challenge for the maker. You need to breathe and some customers want their jaws articulated in the fursuit heads. Usually it's just some simple things like a spring or elastic to make this possible. Though this is not in every suit, the fur and foam often stunt and hinder the jaw movement even if the head underneath the fur has the hinge or soft foam to support it. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of time is put into the head and face just because that's the hardest to produce and it's the part of the body people are going to look at the most and first. It shows emotion, demeanor, and a lot of the personality before even seeing the first seater perform in any way. As for the body, many fursuits are built with foam as padding to create shapes of the animal form. Some of these shapes include digitigrade legs, a longer tummy, a massive tail, or sometimes just a little extra muscle. In place of foam, some makers use inflatable inserts for easier storage. Some fursuiters prefer a skin-tight look that's more proportionate to their natural body, squeezing the wearer to a more human form. Raw materials for a fursuit range anywhere from $200 to $1,500, depending on the scope of the project. Many people will pay much more to have theirs created custom by a professional fursuit maker, a new class of furry creator. They have to add not only material costs, but time, effort, and skill into the equation of fursuit costs. These makers can gain such notoriety and popularity in this small community that making fursuits could end up being their full-time job. Prices for fursuits range from $800 to as much as $9,000. Over the past 30 years, the fursuit aesthetic has evolved dramatically. When you look at these photographs, you can get a sense of what looks were in vogue, what colors were popular, and what elements became standard over time in any period. From a cartoon ripped right out of television, to a hyper-realistic animal form, or psychedelic shape and color, to invented hybrids and species. Fursuits take whatever shape the creators envision. From handmade to professionally cut and sewn, fursuits have become the ambassadors to the entire fandom due to their photogenic muzzles and beaks and their outgoing personalities. It's not surprising that there is a common misconception that all furries must have fursuits since most of what we see in footage and photography are these fandom-made mascots and characters just roaming about at conventions or public parks. In the next installment of Fursuiting A History, we will look to the future with the technology inside fursuits and the fascinating coming events that engineers and costume makers are bringing to this blossoming art form today. I've been your host, Underbite. Thank you for watching. Today's episode was filmed in the YouTube space in Toronto. Behind me, a lovely mural created by Alex Curry, also known as Runt. You can see their work all throughout Toronto, most famously in front of Lee's Palace. I've been your host, Underbite. Thanks for watching. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. Bubble bee bubble. Ba ba. Ba ba. That's okay. Subscribing now to Culturally F. That's a good time now. Do it now! Patreon you gets me higher. You can support us. No. We, I think if we were going to change the lyrics of the song, we probably should have written it out ahead of time. That's okay. That's okay.